Uh oh, neutral. I solved. What's up, boys and girls? I hope you enjoyed last week's 1 million subscriber Sherp video, where we took the Sherp through all the drive-throughs in town per suggestions from my followers. Linda, Steven, and myself had a blast making that video. So if you haven't seen it yet, make sure you put it in your watch list. And to those that didn't like the video, I am deeply sorry that you had to watch me have a good time. Now I'm bringing up that video because I promised you guys something. I promised that if you were the millionth subscriber, you get the grand prize, which is me taking your wife to Olive Garden. So we reached out to the winner and it turns out his wife, well, Due to circumstances out of our control, it just wasn't going to work out. But hearty congratulations to David, the one millionth and fourth subscriber. I'm taking your wife to Olive Garden, and I'm going to record the whole thing. So make sure you subscribe so you can watch what I'm sure will be a cringe festival. So because you all have short attention spans, here's the quick summaries of the prior Tesla V8 swap videos. In the first episode, I'm going to put a V8 in the Tesla. The second episode... I put a V8 in the Tesla, and now the, all the episodes leading to the finale will be all the things that need to get done so the car can actually work. Now, I've been on a journey scouring eBay to find the parts needed to put it together, and it's been pretty easy so far because there's tons of parts on eBay, and without them, this wouldn't even be possible. So now we're at the hard part. The engine is in, but we have to start figuring out the transmission and how it's going to be powered. Before we show you what it's like under the hood, and today we're going to show you what was done inside the car so far, along with removing additional components needed to make this thing work from the donor car. So Steven and I woke up in the morning to meet up with Joshua to get a head start on the project. Richard has actually been pooping in this Cumberland Farms for about 18 minutes. Oh, look at that. He's finally emerged. Oh, I did some shopping, baby. You were like oh, pooping for like 18 minutes. Yeah, I know. It's, it's been a while. I had some stuff going on. Ready to see what so. we got for, for the booty? Ready? Yeah, what do you got? Chunky beef. <laughs> what? <laughs> and it's funny. It's funny. Like, I thought this was a good idea. Then I realized, how am I going to heat this up? This how doesn't make any sense. Heat this up? And I have no spoon. Mucho mango. Who doesn't love this? The problem with this is that they only had the big ass one. Usually they have the small one that's like a dollar. You get it for 99 cents. This was 199. Oh. Not thrilled, but whatever. Okay. Snap. You know what you had these before? Yeah. Delicious. Yeah, I can get down with that. Delicious, right? Another good thing, um, I got a good deal on this. This is already opened. The tender bites. So they actually, <laughs> <laughs> I actually got a discount. Was it already opened or did you start eating it before you I paid actually, for it? I actually got a good discount on this. Yeah. Sure. No, this this was hey. Hey. Where's she going? Where's she going? Where's the dad? I don't see <laughs> Daddy wasn't there. I don't, I don't see a dad. This is open too. I got the wasabi, almonds, and um, yeah, pretty much it. I mean, that was easy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> see, I don't understand something. What? It's not to me. Why are these so much damn money? This was almost $9. It's, it's steak, man. Meat snacks. It says it on the thing. But there's like 10 pieces in here. That's about it. Well, yeah, I mean, the bag's full of air. I know. This doesn't make any sense. This is, I, dude, I could have got the two for 20 at Applebee's. I could have had a hot steak and mashed potatoes and like a drink. I don't know, man. Well, stop being a loser. Yeah, well, you know what? It's time to start winning. Yeah. So this game is called Landlord Go. It's kind of like, you know, Pokemon Go and Monopoly had a nice candlelit dinner together. And then what? And then they had a love child. Oh. See, it's like Monopoly, except the map is the world all around you. Wow. Crazy, huh? Then you could use AR to scope properties to buy in game. And you're like a landlord, you collect rent every 15 minutes and get that cheddar <laughs> or steak. There you go. <laughs> I like your avatar, Uncle Rich. That's me. Is, is that you? That looks like a black woman. Literally. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> Literally me. I also have no hair, so I don't know what's, you know. Yeah, that, I mean, uh, you're wearing a. Yeah. Th this is what I wish I looked like. Oh, I see. Yeah. Everything's better in. Everything's better over here. False realities. Right. And every person that clicks on the link in the description box below gets one million in-game cash and a special starter pack. I can't eat this. Is that, <laughs> is that the, is that the uh, sodium nitrate? <laughs> ah, let's put something you're not supposed to eat in the bag yeah, with something it, you can eat. Let's just keep it fresh. Even still, I don't care. Well, enjoy your shit. Yeah. Do we have our burnt seat? On the inside. Thanks, I know, Plain Rock. I know, yeah, thanks, Plain Rock. I know it's messy in here. What we're going to do, and by we, I mean uh, Joshua, who's uh, been assigned with that task, he's going to start forming the transmission tunnel. So it's going to start getting formed from about right here, 
it's gonna loop over the transmission onto the other side. Oh, sorry. Thanks, Angel. I actually like your hand on my leg. So, oh. and then what we're gonna, what we're gonna do? <laughs> don't move it. No, what we're gonna do so, is we're gonna, <laughs> you put it back. And then yeah, no one back. can see. And then even, no, no, no one can see. Yeah. No, oh, sorry. <laughs> and then even crazier, clutch, a clutch pedal in a Tesla. Oh, my word, heavens me. And a lot of people were asking, you know, how come we don't make it automatic and front wheel drive? Uh, we don't talk to those people. We don't. We don't. We just don't even associate with them. A front wheel drive automatic Tesla. I, I, yeah. Anyways, so yeah, this is the clutch pedal, brake, uh, the accelerator pedal, and then the other interesting part that we have to figure out is the uh, the shifter. So right now, this is actually too damn close. If you look at this, this isn't the permanent mounting position. This actually isn't level. This is level. And right now we're getting kind of too close to the sun here. And I think we're gonna go with a short throw shifter, one that's actually angled back a little bit. I think it's gonna replace this entire section. And it's gonna be a shifter that's angled, I think, slightly shorter and slightly back. So there's still more room to shift when we're doing some power shifting of the track. So. What was that motion? Yeah, this shit right here. There you go. Very yep. nice. Joshua is definitely a car to drinking problem. But... Yeah. My God. Why leave the bottles in there, though? It's almost like he's flexing. Well, most alcoholics do that, you know? Yeah, it's like a little. They forget. Of... What's well, what accomplishment? Yeah. Hey, look, I did something. I drank, in, I drank three V8s in one day. I drank a lot today. Yeah. Uh, I guess I get it. Not really, but a little bit. Come on, every time you watch Cops, you know, it's like they always have to shuffle through the bottles. And it's like, sir, have yeah. you been drinking that? <laughs> Can you get license registration? You just who hear has, clink, clink, clink. Who has the time to throw away those bottles, though? That's the problem. <laughs> that's that's kind of how it is. Four McDonald's bags, like somebody I know. Yeah. Popeye's man. chicken bags all over their we'll just, interior. We'll just, we'll just no one that. gets to see the inside of your car. Why? We'll edit that part Why out. Why is that? We took the dash frame out because today we're going to start the wiring process. We have to make sure we have enough clearance around the transmission to start running the wiring because uh, Joshua, I think he's almost on his book. Joshua, how far are you in the book? I've been slacking. Oh. Okay. And uh, I'm trying to get to it. All right, well, he- We believe in you. He'll get there eventually. Um, but for now, um, what we're doing is uh, we have to start taking the wiring out of the white car uh, to start putting the wiring in this one, obviously. And if we put the dash frame in, we're not gonna have any clearance or uh, enough real space to do that. So we're gonna start doing that today. Yeah, so this is all the material that uh, <laughs> that Joshua cut out. I was <laughs> getting worried at first, but honestly, it's pretty smart the way he did it because if you look on top of this, oh, I can squeeze my, my, oh, my oh, wide oh, self oh, in here, oh, sorry. Oh. A little more room than Linda. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. If you look at how he did it, instead of cutting out this entire section, he just cut the top off pretty much. So there's still some structural rigidity here. Um, but remember the sections I cut up from the other car, we still have to add more to make this a little bit stronger. But as of right now, we're in pretty, pretty decent shape, you know, and here's the rear end. Look at that. That's already in ready to go. All right, now, Steve on, this is the goal for today, All right? We have to remove a whole bunch of the wiring because a lot of people have been asking me, how we're gonna work the two systems together. And my plan is to actually use as much of the OEM test stuff as possible. As a result, I need a lot of this wiring. Now, I don't need a lot of the, uh, the wiring specifically, but I wanna keep a lot of the harnesses in place because it'll be a lot easier you know, to have the headlights and the horn and all the electronics up front because all of that runs off the main wiring harness that goes into the cabin. Now, in most cases, what you would do is you actually strip the harness back and only take what you need. Uh, but again, this is a lot easier just taking the whole thing out, running all the wiring and leaving everything as is and whatever we connect will work uh, as needed as opposed to going through the entire wiring harness and chasing all that stuff through. We're not gonna need a lot of the lines to these pumps. There's a water pump right here. There's a junction, another water pump, and there's a couple other junctions and water pumps up there to pump the coolant through the, uh, the battery warmer as well as the rear motor. So a lot of those we're not gonna need. We're not gonna need this, um, this AC panel either or the battery heater. So again, a lot of this is going away. We're also going to get rid of the ear suspension and go with the coil suspension. So these two fuse boxes might be an issue, but the one right back here will be easy because this actually mounts that brace in the back, which we still have. Uh, only thing we're missing is we're actually missing this section. <laughs> yeah, entire this entire board, section. Yeah. So figuring out again, I mean, this thing is pretty long. We might be able to peel it back and put it elsewhere because there is a decent amount of room under here for activities. Another junction box, DC to DC converter. This is where the 12 volt battery lives and this can easily be transferred to the other car too. 
We're not gonna need the DC to DC converter. Uh, the car might complain that it can't see it. You know, we're gonna start looking at ways to, to clear those error codes because we're not going to we need a lot of that stuff. And then going on the inside. Watch the paint. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. Come on. Oh. And going on the inside, this is the HVAC system. So we have to remove a lot of this and by a lot, I mean the entire thing, to get to the wiring harness behind that so we could start running it in, in the other car. We have these over here too. And these are the motors that open and close the sunroof, but we'll keep those too. I think the ones in the other car should work, so I might keep them as is. The other interesting part is the braking system and the brakes are taken out of that car. What we're gonna do is we're gonna transfer this braking system to the V8, uh, to ice T as, as Steven says. But the problem is, is that one of the brake lines actually runs right in the back there. And you know what's there, right? In the new car, a big fat engine. So we have to think about how we're gonna reroute that. Yeah, exactly. How we're gonna reroute that brake line. I don't know if we have to kind of reroute it so it goes over, so it goes under, or actually make a new brake line altogether. So it actually gets past that. So that's gonna be another interesting part to this, uh, to this puzzle. This is in case you wanted to see what it looks like on the inside of a Model S. I know you guys haven't seen this in quite some time. Say hi, Steven. That wasn't very nice. Thankfully, the windshield's removed already. But I, I gotta say, taking out the HVAC of this car is a lot easier than the other ones I've done before. But uh, it's those two bolts up there. There's a couple more screws at the bottom. And uh, this is how the, uh, the air flows throughout the car. Uh, you got this center stack and that plastic flat roll goes to the back to give the rear occupants the, uh, the heat. And on these sides, this goes under both seats. One, two, and then this goes to the center console. So that's really it. Taking this out is the other interesting part. If you look here, the transmission tunnel actually comes out a little bit more on this side. So we have to get a little creative of how we're gonna mount this box. It controls the air suspension, the main computers in here, and uh, there's a lot of really important stuff going on in here. So routing that could get interesting. It's like a little condom packet right there. <laughs> a little ramen seasoning packet. Or, or that too. <laughs> for the for the non reverse line. <laughs> so now we got we got the H back unit out right there on the ground. Look at that. Da, 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 da. Isn't she pretty? Going up on eBay. This is the fun part. This is what failed in my last car. If you look at this. That is just that. Yeah, there's that little noodle sticking out right there. Sometimes when uh this is like the, the line that kind of <laughs> evacuates the excess condensation in the HVAC unit. Or it's supposed to. It's supposed to, but sometimes this breaks just like it did here. Tesla decided to put the airbag controller and the air suspension controller right below this drip. And instead of like, Ingenious. instead of fixing it and like not putting it at one of the lowest points of the car, when, again, when this ruptures, you're gonna get water all over the place. They actually put a drip tray on top of it so when the water comes down here, it like diverts the water at the sides and it just gets your feet wet instead. So I mean, I guess it's kind of, I guess it's kind of smart, but uh, that's, that's the problem I had before. Again, when this breaks, if the car shifts too much, this is a hard plastic um, uh, nipple, right? This is a, I know, I had a hard time saying that. And this is a rubber hose. Yeah. So again, the car shifts, you go back and forth. This breaks, all the excess water from the AC unit just dumps right here onto your feet. So I mean, hey, a, they they had to, you know, production was just intense. They had to get them out the door. Yeah, they wanted to get out the door, so this is what they did. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, way. yeah, way. So this is the airbag stuff. So again, this is what the transmission tunnel is now. So it's a matter of rerouting literally everything that's here.
Okay. All right, Steve on. So we're actually gonna end up boxing all this stuff up and putting it on eBay. What are we gonna use, you think? What should we use to ship it? It's one solution. Yeah, you gotta <laughs> ship station. And the reason why I like ShipStation so much is because you could actually choose from uh, USPS, FedEx, UPS, and even international. And it's good too because you actually could get access to the discounts that a lot of Fortune 500 companies get. And you could apply it to your own orders and it makes it a lot easier. It's convenient, it's fun, it's fast to use and shipping a lot of this stuff would be a lot easier because we have like probably like 50 to 75 parts to ship and using ShipStation would uh, Except for that. Except for that, yeah. No, one, no one's gonna buy that burn seat. But, but either way, so you could try ShipStation free for 60 days when you use offer code RichRebuilds for selling whatever it is you're trying to sell. Use it now or after you watch the rest of this episode, obviously, and uh, make ship happen. That was a good pun. You know, it was a good. You know, it was a good pun. Make shit happen. That's theirs, not yours. Ma they really? Yeah. I didn't make that up. No. It's like the banner on their website. Oh, sorry. That was a good pun, though. Make shit happen. <laughs> yeah. Now we got to get to the. I have to take off the front wheel. And start disconnecting the DC to DC. Mm. truth these are the labels h j k l m this one is not labeled but in order to separate these two harnesses i have to remove these h j k l m and then that last yellow one so let's do that wow this was fun okay all we have to do is wire this whole thing back in the other car. That's it. Oh, don't forget this one. Oh, yeah. That's it. All that work for two wiring harnesses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, there's a hole. Yeah, it's it can be done. It's like right there, there. I can figure it out. You see, look at that. Joshua is video. Look at that, Joshua. Amazing. It's amazing. Right. He looks He's so good. happy doing it, too. All right, so I'll start snaking and you pull. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We'll switch to the Joshua view. Switch. And here we go, arguably one of the most important parts of the entire build, the brake booster. Need so brakes? Yeah. yeah, we need brakes. Thanks, Joshua. Here we go. If you look at this, this is the windshield washer fluid reservoir. Oh, here, here, uh... Oh, sh And there's already fluid in it. And I'm gonna be keeping this. That's like $1.99 right there. So, I mean, yeah. I'm keeping this back away. Not getting jumped out at all. No? I mean, it'll leak out naturally on its own. Yeah, yeah. But I will not <laughs> this out manually, no. Oh, those are already there. So I'm gonna be replacing these lines, obviously, with the ones that are good. And then back here, remember, there's that line that goes straight back. Yep. I think I might be able to make a hump over the transmission tunnel. Um, and it might be okay. Yeah, so or or instead of going back and around, I could just go right across here and go in the back as opposed to going like that way instead. So once we... Now, wait a second. You got to remember where the pedals are, how much that MCU sticks out from there. Remember, once the, fr the dash frame is in, that's like 18 inches and then MCU starts. Right. And then this is just hitting before where the MCU is. So you want to make sure. And then again, it's going to have to be angled once right. we get the shifter in place. Once this little dude's there, then it'll have to be angled down because we'll be whacking the screen. Right. So that's the new shift. We ordered a new shifter. When that comes in. Short throw. We'll be able to get a better idea for uh, it's, it's short throw and it's curved. 
for her pleasure. Did you peel this off one of your like your walls or something when you were remodeling, Joshua? You gotta do what you gotta do, man. This seems, <laughs> this, Don't worry about it. this seems like it's from a wall of some sort. What are you thinking about, Richard? No, I'm not thinking. Anything. Tell the people they want to know. No, they don't. They don't care. <laughs> so I'm, 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 I'm curious. So wait, Joshua, is this gonna be wider, or is it just gonna be the same thing but angled out? It's gonna be wider. Wider. Okay, that's what I was thinking. At a certain point, it's gonna go wider. Yeah. Or narrow, whichever way you wanna look at it. Deeper. Must go deeper. Give you some cardboard, and you can design it, and I'll build it. Okay. Do that. You've seen my cardboard skills, right? Hey. Okay. I mean, I'll I'll design it. You see, you see how <laughs> I know how this is gonna go down. Yep. <laughs> Rich's drawing skills are are just yeah, my drawing skills aren't that great. Um, you could put them up ne up next to any five year old. <laughs> it's hard put to tell. Put me up next to any five year old. <laughs> any five year old you they want. They will probably win. Honestly. <laughs> All right, as you can see, it's much easier to install the wiring with the engine out of the car, so the engine came out again. Now, in the next episode, we're going to start tying things together. The plan as of right now is to run a standalone for the gas engine LS3 and run the Tesla body control module so the MCU works, along with the horn signals, headlights, and door handles. Now, there's still a lot to think about in terms of fuel, exhaust, and radiator placement, but if you like this kind of stuff, then stick around. There's going to be a lot more fun to be had. And if you want more of Uncle Rich more than just once a week, then catch me on Instagram at Richie B Kid or even Twitter at Rebuilds Rich for your daily dose of trash content. I will see you guys next week.